Greetings streamers, today we're going to bring you a great review of the three most popular streaming devices that we currently own. Some of them are a little outdated, so please, uh, I apologize for that, but they are pretty much the same as their newest counterparts, so don't get to uh, worry about it. We're going to start with the Roku streaming stick. This is the older version, the newer one comes with quad-core 1GB RAM, 4K resolution, voice search, Wi-Fi, and Dolby Digital Sound. You see that the controller doesn't have the remote, the option for voice search, but it's because it's a little bit outdated. The new one comes with some changes. Still, the OS is the same. So we're going to show you what is more important, which is how we actually interact with this device. And it has to do with the layout and the interface of the Roku device itself. So don't worry too much about the specs. They're pretty much all the same. On this review also, you're making sure that they are all within the same price range. So you will have a better idea of which one is the best option for you. They're about 50 US dollar at the current price of today to um, June or July 2020. As you can see, the Roku is more family oriented. It also has a lot of aids for people with disabilities. For instance, those that do not have good hearing or might have some issues with vision. It has voice uh, search and messages whenever you choose anything on the menu. It also comes with Dolby Surround, as we mentioned earlier. And you can pretty much set up everything with regards to your payment methods, the privacy, even the microphone. You have third party uh, apps with microphone enabled. But as you can see, the interface is very user friendly. It's not complicated. Uh, it does give you a lot of setup and options to use for, for instance, you can also do screen mirroring on Roku devices from your smartphone or your tablet. But again, it's pretty much simple. The interface itself, it's very, very general. Uh, it gives you some uh, apps at the very beginning and you have to look for what is recommended as a secondary option in the menu, as you can see. And it will show you pretty much some suggestions based on the most popular apps that are available on Roku, which is pretty good, especially if you have a family, because sometimes you do not, do not know what to find on your streaming device. Here, you just go and see what is suggested in the menu and it will tell you pretty much based on content and on channel what is available depending if it's either free or if it's on some of the apps that you have installed. If not, you might have to install those apps that they do recommend. But again, it's very family oriented. Um, the processor is pretty good. And something that is very curious about Roku devices is that they never tell you how much storage capacity they have. That's a secret. So we never know how much uh, channels we can actually install, but we believe that it's pretty much all uh, pretty uh, safe than the Roku cloud and it just pulls it to your device, which is why sometimes it might take a little bit longer for apps or content uh, to load on Roku devices. Again, you have the search option and you can also use the voice search on the newer versions. Channel store, it's very, very well organized. That's something that I do need to point out a lot. Roku has worked very, very hard on improving their um, channel store experience. You can see that they do have a lot of apps. They have feature apps. They're constantly reviewing them and they're very well organized. You can also install them from the app store on your PC or your smartphone. But if not, you can use it here on your Roku device and you will notice that they're very well categorized. You can see the reviews that they have. You can even check out some screenshots, which is something really useful, especially if you do not know uh, how much how many, how many new content is being uploaded to the Roku streaming devices. It's not the same with the private channels. They used to be a little bit more lenient with those before, but for some reason they removed that option and it has become a little bit of a problem. So uh, in that sense, the, the content is somewhat limited only to the App Store, but still there's a lot of stuff to check out. Sometimes, as we said, it takes a little bit to charge uh, because it depends on how much space you have and how fast or how close you are to your internet, uh, Wi-Fi or router where you're using an extender. So it might be a little bit slower. You, you notice that it's taken some time. We don't have that many megs here, so I do apologize for that. But anyways, you'll notice that everything is very well organized and set up in a nice layout. So this is the app that you want to have if you have a family if you have children or if you have uh, uh, third, uh, I mean, older adults, it depends on, on, or people that are not technically savvy, this is definitely the device that you want for them. 
Now we're going to talk about the Amazon Fire Stick. Again, this is the older version with the uh, a Prime Alexa one. It comes the same with the Cortex Quad Processor, 1.5 GB RAMs, 8 gigs of memory, 4K resolution, voice search, Wi-Fi, and Dolby DTS. It's very similar when you compare it to the streaming stick. However, this is Android based. Even though it's a, an Amazon OS system, it is still Android based. Now, the layout, it's definitely way better. And I will tell you why. Because Amazon puts a lot of effort for you to watch the content as previews instead of just watching apps or channels. What you will notice is that they will show you the content that is available on the apps right away. As soon as you hit the home button, it just shows up. And it's because they want to encourage you to either rent it or purchase it or even to subscribe to some of that content. There's also a lot of free content, which is different from the Roku. These guys, they do a lot of work on improving their interface because it used to be more Amazon Prime oriented, but they noticed that not everyone has Amazon Prime. So they have been including more and more content from other apps or channels for people to enjoy more stuff at the home screen. It's very fast and it's very responsive. And again, as you can see, this is definitely something that you will want to have if you're looking for something that it's more, um, I wouldn't say family friendly because some of the features in the menus are a little bit hidden or complicated, but still, if you are someone that does enjoy a lot of movies and TVs, definitely this is the app, the device that you want, I'm sorry. As you can see, for example, we chose one and it's telling us there's many ways to get it. You can either purchase it, rent it, or subscribe for a free trial of maybe HBO Prime, HBO. So this is more oriented to all the apps that are part of the streaming device, which is good in contrast with what happens with Roku, because they mostly show you the apps, but not the content within the apps. Amazon now, what they do is they show you the content within the apps from the home menu. So you can make a smart decision of whether you want to access the content, you want to download the app, or you want to purchase it. So they have definitely changed the game on the streaming devices. And that's something really good also, they do have uh, categorized their apps and um, content also on the Amazon Fire. They included a small section in the menu on which you can find your apps categorized. And we're going to show you really quick how to do so. Let me see if I can show it real quick. We're going to go all the way up. And as you can see on apps, there it is. They're suggested but you can actually look for them based on categories. They're also showing feature apps, which is something good because you don't have to be looking all the way for most of the apps. They will allow you to actually uh, see some of the apps that are um, suggested based on the content that you already have downloaded or installed on your Amazon Fire Stick. So it's more intuitive instead of being just uh, a bundle of apps thrown there. It will actually check out what do you have and it will kind of suggest them based on your tailored content which is good. So that means that they have been improving a lot on the user interface experience. It's not only about the hardware, but it's also about the experience and actually checking out streaming content because we know that there's a lot of streaming content out there and it might not be very simple or easy to actually get a hold of it because you might get overwhelmed with so much content that you do not know what to actually watch on the end. So this is something useful. They also have games now which you can play either with your Amazon um, Fire Stick controller or with a third-party uh, Bluetooth-enabled controller that is compatible with the Amazon Fire devices. So again, this is something really good for Amazon. They have been improving a lot of their user experience, and I think that up to this point, they do have the best interface when it comes to uh, the home content, apps, features, and also you can install third-party apps it's simpler, but you need to do some tricks. Here is what I wanted to show you, the categories. As you can see, they're more organized than they used to be. They have also made some improvements on the App Store online. Now, the third uh, streaming device is the Xiaomi MyBox S. This one is entirely Android-based, the same. Cortex Quad-Core, 2 GB RAM, 8 GB memory, 4K resolution, voice search with Google, and also has a USB port. That's the main difference. Uh, if you take a look at all of the three streaming devices are within the same prime price range and they pretty much have the same uh, features within the hardware or from the hardware point of view. This one, however, has a USB. Now, the interface is not as good as 
neither that on the Roku nor the Amazon Fire. And it's because for some reason, Xiaomi, it's more focused on the Google Play Store services. So they pretty much uh, just show you a couple of stuff like Netflix and they show you the content that is within Netflix and also the content within the Play Store. They will recommend some apps uh, that it's pretty much suggested by Google Play, but you don't get that many uh, third party apps on the home screen that will allow you to show you more and more, more content. They do have a great live interface, but we will show it later how to set it up. So if you have some apps that are live enabled, like Pluto TV, you can just hit a button and you will notice it's pretty much like cable, but we will show it to you later. You need to configure it. But still, uh, the way that the app store or the home screen works, it's not as good as on the Amazon Fire, but it's because they're more focused on the live experience and uncertain Google App Store, play, uh, so Google's uh, App Store recommendations. I'm sorry. So again, I think that they could improve this a little bit more, but for some reason, uh, the Android TV devices haven't worked that much on that area, and I think it has to do with Google policies. Also, they pretty much removed all the capacity for installing third-party apps using apps like the Downloader. And we will show in another video how to do so. There's a way to bypass it. But for instance, if you want to install third party apps on this new Android TV based uh, Android boxes, it's really complicated and it has to do with the Android TV latest update. Again, you set them up pretty much on the uppermost part of the menu, the, the apps that you want to currently be visiting. You add them as favorites. And you can also hit the icon for the apps and it will display all the apps that are installed on your device. But it's not as friendly. I mean, you can see that it's somewhat disorganized and it doesn't suggest you a lot of stuff. Yes, there's a lot of apps that you will not find neither on the Amazon nor the Roku. And it's because this uh, streaming box is Android TV based. So there's a lot of third party apps. However, the Amazon Fire Stick is also Android based. So don't forget that you can install apps from third party developers uh, using some tricks and a download or, or apps. Here it's pretty much the same. However, they have restricted some of the apps. Remember that because it's Android based, it doesn't mean that you get access to all the apps that you will find on your smartphone because the OS on smartphones is completely different from the OS that works on this Android TV based devices. It's Android TV, not Android OS. So do remember that a lot of people get confused about it. But again, uh, you can see the content is really extensive. We wouldn't finish looking for it within the video. So we're going to show you the most important ones. You get live TV, you get IP TVs. I mean, it's very simple. Also, if you want to check out uh, apps like Kodi, because a lot of people do enjoy Kodi, you can install it on these uh, Android TV based devices because it's available already on the App Store. You can also install it on the Amazon Fire, but you need to do some tricks and pretty much download the third party app just to install the Kodi TV. So again, um, Android devices are somewhat overrated because the App Store is great, but it's not as user friendly as you will notice on the Amazon Fire devices. So again, there's plenty of apps that you will not find on other devices. But again, the layout, the configuration within the home screen is not as friendly. So yes, you trade one thing for the other. You get more apps, but they're disorganized. Plus, you can, you can also install them uh, from your Google account into these devices, which is a good thing, but still you don't get that nice layout. So I wouldn't suggest you uh, to get the Android TV uh, for children because if they have never used streaming devices, they might find it difficult. You can still use the Google, uh, the Google Assistant and use voice search for finding apps. We'll try to find Cody, for instance. It does work on the Google Play Store, but it doesn't work on certain apps. As you say, so see, we say Cody and it popped up. On another video, we tried to do the same voice search for within Cinema, which is an app, and it didn't work. So it's somewhat 
requiring some tweaking because some apps just don't work with the Google Voice Search Assistant. It's not the same with Alexa. A lot of apps do work with Alexa Voice Search, which is great, but it doesn't work just as good with this Android TV box. Again, the menu, you can customize it if you want, but the apps that you find that you can actually set up on your home menu, it's not just as many as you would think. It's pretty much all based on Google, TuneIn Radio, maybe CBS, a couple of them. It's not all of them that you can actually drop them on your home screen, and that is somewhat annoying. Still, the Xiaomi My Box has a lot of potential. It's the most powerful box or streaming device that we currently own because it has the latest Android update, it also has more RAM, and it also has more storage space, plus it has the capacity of installing or using the USB port for watching movies or maybe photos and other stuff. So we hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will show you a little bit more on how to tweak the live option on this streaming box, because this is the, the strong part of the Android My Box. Uh, it comes with the live button which you click and it will pretty much load all of the live content that you have on those apps that are live tv enabled so it's pretty much like opening the cable on your home or your your cable box you need to set it up so we're going to customize the channels from pluto tv which is live tv in our xiaomi my box and whenever we hit the live button you will notice that they will pop up even with a, a channel guide or a content guide so it's pretty much mimicking what you will have on cable so we hope you enjoyed this video please don't forget to subscribe give us a like if you enjoyed this video also you can follow us on twitter and on facebook we're under streaming army again thanks for watching have a great day and enjoy any of these three streaming devices it's up to you to choose which one you think is the best for you but these are our recommendations. Thanks for watching and goodbye.